go. Um, the entertainment industry is so critical to the state of Louisiana, and in fact, uh, more acutely, Jefferson Parish, and we understand how much uh, revenue is generated by the, the film industry, and this is just another unique uh, asset related to that industry and just preserving uh, that, that industry and, and, and preserving it for, for many generations to come. Um, Jetco's team certainly played a role. We're proud to have helped in the assistance uh, and, and, and helping find the site and, and helping to introduce uh, movie picture archives to, to many of the, the folks in the, in the area. Uh, but we're excited. We're excited to see you locate here, invest here, and, uh, and grow here. So we're, we're looking forward to being a part of that um, in the future. Uh, with that, I know we have a couple of guests uh, of honor here today, and, and they're going to say a few words. Uh, so first, I would like to welcome Ed Poole, who is uh, the chief archivist and researcher for movie picture, uh, movie poster archives. Ed. Thank you. This has been a life dream of ours. My wife and I started 46 years ago by accident collecting which led to, of course, uh, buying collections, becoming a dealer, going through the whole process of retail, all the way up to research in 2000. We basically turned to full-time research because no one had ever done it. Then we grew as far as we could, and until six years ago when we met Linda Thurman, who actually showed us how to turn it into a nonprofit that everything really started to take shape and expand. So with that, we've written 24 reference books on this topic. Uh, this is the only kind in the world as it stands. There's been tons of film research places and film preservation. This is the only nonprofit dedicated to film accessories which we believe are extremely important, especially when there are no more of a certain film left. And later, for those that stay around, we'll be showing you some of the things back there. But especially thanks to Linda for the nonprofit, and we're hoping this is just a touch that will continue to expand out. Thank you. Thank you and, and congratulations on seeing that lifelong passion uh, come, come to fruition. Uh, next, I want to introduce Linda Thurman, who serves as Executive Director of Movie Poster Archives. of my life in the entertainment industry. I've done almost everything that can be done from working on set to the chairman's office of United Artists. And this is the most fun I've ever had. <laughs> uh, it's like the dessert on my career. When I met Ed and Sue, they kind of got to know me slowly because they needed to be able to trust me and we're still working on that. <laughs> but uh, they were really thrilled when I was able to set up a nonprofit it was like my fifth or sixth nonprofit, so that wasn't really a challenge. The challenge has been what to do with a million and a half items and what to, how to share those with people. Every day someone asks, well, where can we see the posters? Well, here is where you can see the posters. And we're wel we welcome anyone to come in and look. We put anything that is extra in our collection is available for sale because that supports the preservation. And we're also going to be doing trainings We'll have a screening every Thursday night of a classic film or a fun project or something that uh, we all want to see that won't make it into a you know, major theater. We have our own screening room, which is badly needed in the New Orleans area. So thank you for being here. Thank you for welcoming us like you have. And please come back and enjoy the place. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Um, I mentioned our, our appreciation for your investment in Jefferson Parish. Uh, we believe we're we're extremely business friendly, and a big piece of that is our, our elected officials who are very supportive of business. Uh, and that starts with our parish president, Cynthia Lee Shang. Cynthia. Thank you, Jerry. Um, you know, 
you know, Jefferson Parish has had so many incredible things happen this year, but I am so excited just to be in this space. It is so unique. I've been looking forward to coming here. Um, we're very involved in the film industry in Jefferson Parish. You know, we've had 29 films shoot this year, which is very critical <laughs> to our economy, uh, bringing jobs and housing for out of town people, supplies, equipment. And this is another piece of, of that rich history for us in Jefferson Parish. Um, I'm, I'm happy to be here personally because I think we all have a special place in our heart for movies um, and it's very personal to us and so when you come here there's a part of it that just feels like home it's, it's your past memories I went to Loyola and they did the, um, the film Institute at Loyola so now the new generation can stream anything and they can just buy it um, but in the old days you couldn't always get international films and the Loyola had a film Institute where they literally mail Loyola the reels mm -hmm and two or three times a week we could go into a classroom and watch incredible foreign films and so that was where my love of movies started but I think we all have our own personal um, ways that we became attached to to movies so um, and then you mentioned the research you do and I want to thank you for when I walked in here you put a treasure in my hand um, Linda and they do their research well because they gave me um, a picture of a film called Dr. Goldfoot in the Bikini Machine right here <laughs> And this is my aunt who's in it, so I never got to see the movie before. I knew she had been in a, a couple of films, so incredible research that you do. <laughs> but uh, we want to encourage everybody to come here. This is, I'm told, the retail space that they're in. I know everybody's in the gift buying mode for, um, for the Christmas season, so if you have a movie lover in your life, this is the place that you need to be and come to. So we want to thank you. We know you could locate anywhere. We're so proud to have you here in Jefferson Parish. Thank you for being part of our, of our family. Thank you, Cynthia. Next, uh, from the Lieutenant Governor's Office, we have Michael Domain. Yeah, this is uh, just a great opportunity for the Lieutenant Governor in, to, to uh, let everybody know what an asset, what an asset we have in the pools in Linda Thurman, and what they've brought to Louis, what they've spent their whole lives building. And, you know, it's, it's, um, it's up to us, Jedco, Jefferson Parish, the state of Louisiana, Lieutenant Governor's Office, we need to help them. They need help now. They need, a, in, in a lot of different areas. And uh, again, they brought, almost by, their, by themselves, brought this to where we are today. And it's up to us. You know, this is truly, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an economic developer from, from way back. This is truly a tremendous economic development program. But I will tell you, Ed and Susan, and Doug, they don't know a whole lot about economic de development, do you? No. So <laughs> <laughs> you, they need your expertise. Parish president, they need you. And I'm going to, you know, I asked, it, I asked Ed today, what can a lieutenant governor do for you? that he hasn't done you know, yet, and I'm gonna, if I didn't get that answer yet, but I'm gonna be around <laughs> yet. And this is just, you know, I don't know, no other state has this. No, no. no. And, and no other state will. And, and we're just just cutting edge, you know, you know uh, it's just, I, I'm at a loss for words and seeing how important this is. And, um, you know, we, uh, uh, we, we're doing a, a the tourism office, I don't work in the tourism office, the tourism office is doing surveys right now uh, to, to see who visits our state. And 61% of the people that come here come here because of a film or a TV show or things that, that connected them to Louisiana. That's an astounding number. So we, uh, again, thank you for letting me be a part of Linda and, and Ed, and thank you for letting me be a, a part of your success. And God bless. Thank you. Next up, we have the director of the Louisiana State Museum, Susan McClay. Good morning. I also work for Lieutenant Governor Billy Nungesser, so I will add also on his behalf and on behalf of the Louisiana State Museum uh, that it's such a pleasure to be here today. I first met Linda's acquaintance through a mutual friend and got to know her and I'm just thrilled to see this. This is just amazing and you do have to come and visit to really comprehend it. 
but I was basically asked to address this from a little bit different angle, so I'm gonna be a little bit more scholarly about my approach, um, and I'm, I've timed it so I won't go too long, Linda. Uh, basically, the connection is that the Louisiana State Museum uh, has about um, only 150 posters in our collection. They're all related to Louisiana and New Orleans, and while this number pales in comparison to what Linda and Ed uh, and Susan have here, we do share the archive's belief that movie posters are historical documents worthy of study and preservation. For many early films, posters may be the only form of documentation that remain because the films themselves are lost. The text, graphics, and visual iconography provide important information about the past. They also show the evolution of technology as illustrations were replaced by photography and then digital effects. We also have uh, value movie posters for their artistic merit. A prime example among the posters in the museum's collection are two designed by Daniel Sayer Grossbeck, and I was disappointed, Ed, that he's not in your book, but next time. <laughs> uh, this, is a high, this gentleman was a highly accomplished painter, illustrator, and muralist and he created the poster for the 1938 film, The Buccaneer, which by the way is on display at the Louisiana State Museum in the Battle of New Orleans exhibit in the Cabildo. So I recommend you all go see that. The artistic importance of these posters is communicated through the emotions they evoke to encourage potential moviegoers to come see the films. Many movie posters do indeed blur the distinction between commerce and art and arguably movie poster design and the ability to succinctly convey the tone, style, and even subject of a film in a single image is an art form in and of itself. And finally, movie posters help us learn more about the broader cultural context in which films were created and consumed. Um, they can provide clues to how a film's marketing and reception differs from place to place. An example is foreign films. An American film, then it goes overseas, and it's the title, everything about it changes, and it's just fascinating, you know, to compare all that. Um, but in addition to studying individual movie posters, we also have to kind of analyze them as a collection and to see over the years and the decades what they're telling us about society and our times, and they document history in a sense um, by looking at them in global. So when you look at groups of posters, we can begin to identify and explore certain historical patterns or trends and public views on stereotypes, societal values, um, and societal values of the time and place. So in conclusion, for all these reasons and many more, movie posters are worthy not only of collecting for their intrinsic value, but also for serious scholarly study and we commend the Movie Poster Archive, Linda, Ed, and Susan for doing just this. This is a great public service. Thank you so much. I mentioned our business-friendly environment here in Jefferson, and, and that starts with the parish administration, but the other half of that equation is our parish council, who is always uh, readily available. Uh, and they are represented by our council member at large, Scott Walker, who tells me he has started at least two films. <laughs> and depending on the time of the year, might might be uh, internet sensation, but uh, Scott. <laughs> I've had the uh, privilege of being in a few films around the New Orleans area that were shot here, which kind of gives you a unique, a unique perspective on things. I was in Olympus Has Fallen a few years ago and uh, the Russell Crowe film Unhinged. Very small parts, but if you look close enough, you can see me. I call it the, the best six seconds in cinematic history. Right now. <laughs> on your still. Look your still. You, you can really have access to those? <laughs> They're there. Um, you gotta look closely. Uh, welcome uh, you all to Jefferson Parish. Thank you for the passion for this project. It's, it's really fascinating to see. I know we, we talk about all the business openings of Jefferson Parish and how different they all are, but this one I think is particularly unique, which makes it fun and exciting and um, a little bit different for us. It's a little bit outside the norm, which is cool. As a, as a kid, I think we're living in a unique time right now. As a kid, um, most of the people in this room, I think, probably can remember before anything streamed, you had to wait for it to come out in the movie theater. You'd hear about it, you'd see the trailers on TV, and you'd go to the movie theater, and 
I was a big movie kid growing up, and then you wait for it to show up in the on on VHS, and you can go rent it at the local video store. Before Blockbuster, it was the major video by my house um, on West Esplanade in Metairie. I remember going to major video at the end of the month when all the new releases would come, and my room at home uh, on Academy Drive in Metairie was full of movie posters mm -hmm. because you know you just put all the it was fun. You put all the movie posters up on the wall. Um, might not be as fun now if my kids wanted to do it, but my parents had no problem with it. But I think it, it, it was a unique time where not everything was as readily available to you and you had to wait and it was delayed gratification. I really enjoyed that part mm. of uh, movie life. Certainly enjoy it now, but it was different back then. I think some of these statistics bear repeating. Uh, it, it's really great that this has a million and a half posters here worth $10 million. More than. More than $10 million. I mean, that's, that's incredibly impressive. 30 countries, 20 different languages. It documents uh, more than 100 films made in Jefferson Parish. Neither of mine, well, actually, Olympus Has Fallen was in Jefferson Parish. It was shot at the Motorsports Park. Oh, that's fine. The other one was. <laughs> <laughs> uh, four full time positions were created here, and I just, I love to see economic development through our small business community, and this is the epitome of a small business in Jefferson Parish. Uh, we are built by small business, it's the backbone of what we do here. So anything we can do to help you all uh, succeed and do what you need to do on a daily basis, the Jefferson Parish Council is here for you. As a councilman at large, I represent the entire parish, so this is part of uh, what I represent, and i um, very happy to have you here, and anything we can do to help you in your mission, happy to be part of it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you all. You. So in summation, welcome to the family. You have a, a community of of uh, elected officials and business leaders who look forward to, to supporting you. Uh, in a minute, we're going to cut cut the ribbon. I think Ed's then going to perhaps give some. A cool new place for movie buffs has opened in Gretna. It's not a theater or a studio, but it is a place where history lives through pictures and posters. Movie New Orleans Forward anchor LBJ has the story. Thank you, and we really appreciate this welcome. Today's opening of the Movie Poster Archive is really one of the most unique openings in Jefferson Parish we've had all year, or really ever. I mean, just being in this space and seeing these incredible movie posters and having photographs of the actors. And if you are a movie lover or a movie buff, this is a treasure trove for you. Jefferson Parish President Cynthia Lee Shang on the opening of a one-of-a-kind nonprofit business devoted to movie posters and pictures. Nestled in the Bellmead Plaza strip mall, the movie poster archives boasts a million and a half assets from the earliest days of the motion pictures. My wife and I started 46 years ago by accident collecting, which led to, of course, uh, buying collections, becoming a dealer, going through the whole process of retail, all the way up to research. Ed and Susan Poole have been the driving force behind the archive. Six years ago, they teamed up with Linda Thurman to form the nonprofit to share the archive's assets with the world. To help fund the project, they offer some movie posters and pictures for sale. If we get seven or 12 or a case, then we have extras that we're happy to share with the public. They don't do any good in storage. The folks at the archive are also researchers, having written 24 reference books about movie posters and images. Today, they researched a special photo for the parish president. This is Dr. Goldfoot and the Bikini Machine. This is obviously a still from that movie, but this is my aunt right here, who started, was one of the actresses in the movie, I guess. I'll have to go back and watch it, but um, what a lovely surprise it was for me and, and my family that she put this in my hand today. For Moving New Orleans Forward, I'm LBJ, WGNO News. And by the way, President Lee Shang's aunt's name is Gina Lee. She is the sister of former Sheriff Harry Lee, and she still lives in Jefferson Parish. That movie poster archive, if you want to check it out, is at 605 Lapalco Boulevard. And a reminder,